Welcome to part 5 of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Archetype Roundup. This time we'll be discussing smells, weapons, shmups, and trash. However, before we start, we must take care of business. <clears throat> Please sub! Okay, business taken care of. Let's get started with archetypes 21 to 25. 21. Aroma. Do you like smells, plants, and having more life points than your opponent could ever hope to burn through in a single turn? Well, there's an archetype for that. Aromas are a series of plant monsters whose main gimmick revolves around gaining life points. Each aroma monster has a continuous effect that is active while the controller has more life points than their opponent, and a triggered effect that activates whenever the controller gains life points. They're supported by a series of back row cards that dump life points onto them and allow them to recover resources very easily. That said, their main weakness, aside from being hard countered by the inverting effects of cards like Bad Reaction to Samochi, are are cards like Skill Drain and Nibiru, really anything that is commonly used to counter most decks these days? Overall, they're a fun deck that can make some pretty decent plays, but they've got some hard counters that keep them from being in Tier 2. However, they're still a very fun deck to play and can perform decently well on their own. Just keep in mind that in any event where a side deck is allowed, you're probably going to get screwed over. Number 22, Artifact. Do you like ancient tools used by mythological figures and also breaking the rules of the game? There's an archetype for that. Artifacts are a weirdly unique archetype in that their monsters can be played face down in the spell and trap zone, hence the rule breaking joke since you're technically speaking not allowed to do that according to the rule book. They almost universally have an effect that if they're destroyed during the opponent's turn, they can special summon themselves. Each of them also have another effect that's active if they're summoned during the opponent's turn. The main focus of the deck is to set themselves, then break themselves during the opponent's turn to disrupt their plays and storm the field, which then allows them to go into XEs or link plays on their turn. Artifacts also work fairly well as an engine, especially with other archetypes that like to blow up their own spell and trap cards. The idea of artifacts is a little dated mostly because they're basically MST bait manifested into an entire archetype, but we're well past the need for said bait in this game. So these guys have to rely on other effects to get themselves popped. Overall, artifacts are an interestingly weird archetype that got some link support to help their plays, so they're at least trying, but I don't think I can give them better than a 3. Number 23. Atlanteans. Do you like generic underwater fish people? There's an archetype for that. So originally I didn't catch on to the fact that Atlanteans actually have a playstyle as an archetype and just called them generic fodder due to the presence of these two pieces of trash. But it turns out that they do actually have a playstyle, it's just not very good. Well, not good as a pure archetype at least. The main gimmick of Atlantean monsters is that their four main monsters have effects that trigger when they're sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect with the prince special summoning a dead Atlantean, the infantry and marksmen target targeting and popping a face up or face down card, respectively, and dragoons fetching a sea serpent monster from the deck. Their intended playstyle is to use this big, totally not a dragon look, it says sea serpent, so it's different lad, Besydra the Atlantean dragon, as a boss monster. But he's not really worth talking about it, as he's an incredibly dated three specific tribute that has a giant trunade and attack lowering effect. In essence, this isn't really an archetype, it's too small for that. This is instead a handful of cards that people run in their deck just for the sake of killing them in order to get some very minor effects or for some rank 3 water goofs. As a pure archetype, these guys are a 5, at best. As a small, splashable part of another deck, they're okay, but I don't think there's too much of a reason to craft too many of these guys unless you plan on specifically running water decks for the future. Number 24, BES. If you like shoot 'em up games like Gradius, then there's an entire archetype for you. BES is a dated gimmick archetype that is hyper-reliant on their field spell to do much of anything. Their main concept is to summon big boss monsters to the field that get counters after being summoned. While they have these counters, they can't be destroyed by battle. After battling, they remove one counter, and if they're out of counters, they explode. This weirdly suicidal mechanic is intended to reflect the shield mechanic from Gradius' boss encounters. The only card worth talking about in this archetype is their field spell, BEF Zealous. This makes it so they can instantly fetch their other powerful card, Boss Rush, and makes it so all BES cards have some degree of protection, while also boosting their stats and giving them a free special summon from the hand every time that also gives them one counter. These guys live and die by the field spells, and while they can sort of make plays with it, they're still immensely weak. Yeah, getting one or two 2k plus beaters that can't be destroyed by battle and have destruction and targeting immunity is cute, but most decks can do a lot more than that these days. They're kind of a relic from the time period where decrepit archetypes were exhumed from their graves and got hooked up to a massively overdesigned field spell in an attempt to give them some semblance of life. And like many of these experiments, BES didn't take the life support and just died again after being in horrific agony for a few days. In short, build BES if you literally cannot get enough of Gradius, but overall this is a safe archetype to skip. Part 5. Number 25, Bamboo Sword. Alright, this is a bit of a weird archetype since it's not really an archetype.
and is more of a card draw engine. I normally wouldn't even include it in here, but Master Duel listed as a category, so we're gonna go ahead and do it, even though I basically said all there is to say already. The archetype is based around a card called Broken Bamboo Sword, which is an equipped spell that gives no attack. The main draw of this archetype is a card called Golden Bamboo Sword, which, if you have a Bamboo Sword equipped spell on the field, lets you draw two cards. These are commonly run in Exodia decks to get a large amount of card draw, but there are also other alternatives to the Broken Sword. Cursed Bamboo Sword also gives zero attack, but can bounce another Bamboo Sword to let the equipped monster attack directly. This card also fetches any Bamboo Sword card when it's sent to the graveyard, which results in it also being run in Exodia decks, as discarding it allows you to fetch the Golden Sword cards for extra card draw. There's also Soul Devouring Bamboo Sword, which is a continuous spell that makes it so any opponent hit by a Bamboo Sword equipped monster skips their next draw phase. This only lasts for a few turns before the card devours its own soul. Finally, there's Burning Bamboo Sword, which lets you skip the opponent's main phase one if you already have a Bamboo Sword card. All in all, this isn't really an archetype, so I'm just gonna rate it engine out of 10, but it's certainly a fun engine to splash into things. They're not amazing, but I mean, skipping entire phases is an effect rarely seen in this game, so they're pretty neat to splash into something. All right, that's all for this episode. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want, and if you want to check out more of my content, I've got links to the community Discord and my Twitch in the description. With this, I've covered 25 archetypes, which is roughly 1 13th of the archetypes in the game. Next video will be a bit quicker since it's going to be a channel update video discussing the stuff I've learned from this, but after that, we'll be right back on track with 26 to 30. Hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye